It's another one of those days where I'm tempted to forge a snow shovel in the shop today. Luckily, I don't really need another snow shovel, and besides that, my forge really isn't big enough to hold a snow shovel. So we're going to go do something else as part of our countdown till Christmas. So today, while I'm really thinking of warmer summer activities, instead of thinking of working in a cold blacksmith shop, because it's good and chilly in here today, we're going to look at a project suggested by Jerry Rawl, Lone Wolf, and probably not. And that is a marshmallow cooker or a hot dog cooker. Really, you can just use a whittled stick for this, or you can just take a piece of scrap iron and put a point on it and call it a cooker. But we can do a little bit nicer job. This will be really simple. Might be the simplest thing we've done for any of these projects. So let's go over to the forge. Let's get some of this thin rod hot. This is some of that political sign wire, the stuff that holds the signs up in people's yards. I got bunches of this stuff laying around. It's about 3 16 diameter mild steel. Perfect for a project like this. So I've got two of these 3 16 round rods and they're 26 and 3 quarters inches long if that matters. Again, this is just what I happen to have on hand. 67 and a half centimeters long. So I'm going to heat up just one end and we're going to put some points on this and I think a round point will be best for this project. The biggest problem doing this is just that it's going to cool off really fast. But if you're quick you can do it in one heat. There's a nice little round tapered point. I want to do the same thing to the other end. I'm also going to do the same thing to the other bar. I'm turning it 90 degrees between blows back and forth. At least while I do the square taper. Well, I do the octagon and the round. Well, the octagon, I do one surface or one corner. And the round, I just work around in circles. I'm actually making two toasters here. So that's why I've got two bars. And I also have a third bar here. I'm going to straighten out the kink. I'm just going to point one end to this one, and we're going to cut it short here in a minute. I'll explain all of this in just a second. This is good practice drawing out little tapers. And there probably wouldn't be anything wrong with leaving these as square tapers if that's what you want.
with this one done, we should have five tapers done. Two bars with two tapers, one on each end, and one bar with a single taper. I'm going to set this one aside for now, and I'm going to mark these two. And I'm actually making two versions of this. Find my center point and mark that. And this rod bends so easily cold, I think it'll be easier to bend cold than it will be to try and heat it and keep it under control. So I just have a simple bending fork in the vise and I'll bend these at the, the center point that I marked. If it's not quite right, take a little adjustment. I want the, the points to come out in the same place. So that's real good there. Now once that's bent, it's real easy to go ahead and heat up just that bend area. And you can bring this together so it forms more of a ring. And that's more what I'm going to want in the long run. I'm thinking these could have been longer. These are a little bit short. Now it's easy to just squeeze that handle together a little bit in the vise. So you probably get an idea where we're going with this. The next thing I want to do with this one is I want to put some twists in it. I'm going to twist the top end here. just by putting a round bar in the, the handle. Just twist it up however much you want to twist it. And it's probably worth going back in the vise to straighten things out. Now we want to put a twist in this area. So if you haven't guessed, this will essentially be a fork. So I want to leave plenty of fork time below the twist. And then just twist this up here. And you can see, see some of this is becoming a bit unruly here. I'm not sure why that. I'm not sure why it twisted above the wrench, but it did. But it's nothing we can't fix. And of course, if you wanted to, you could twist the entire thing up. I just don't think that's what I want to do with it. I like the idea of leaving the center section untwisted. I think I will tighten that twist up just a little bit after fixing it. And I think if we put that other end down, It'll be better controlled in the vise than it is in the, the bending fork. And I'm putting the two tines of the fork, or I should say twisting wrench, I'm putting the two tines of the fork parallel with the, the ring. So now we just need to shape the tines. And here it'll be important to keep a controlled heat and not heat the twist. So if we heat that, we'll quench it and cool it off. I quench this right up to this point so that the twist behaves itself while I open these up. I'm going to go ahead and start opening them just by spreading with a chisel. 
Then I'll reheat them and we'll work them over the horn of the anvil. And by quenching that, it also allows you to hold this and you don't need tongs. Now this could be a cooking fork for anything, not just hot dogs or marshmallows, but since that was what the request was, that's what we're going to call it. You can fiddle with this as much as you want to make it look just the way you want it to. And you can do some controlled bending using a pair of tongs. I'm going to make those fairly parallel, I think, so it's easier to get a hot dog on and off. So something else you need to finish with an edible finish. That's pretty much the whole thing right there. I'm going to go ahead and heat it up and wax it while I get ready to do this other piece. So for the other version, I want to make it three-tined, which is why I made the extra point. You probably figured that out already. And I cut this off to, oh, that's six and three-quarters inches. Again, I just cut it randomly. I'm not that worried about it. Looks like it's 17 centimeters long. And I'm going to insert it in here before I do this twist. And I'm hoping I can keep it all lined up and in there without any kind of a tack weld. I might go ahead and wrap some baling wire around here just to help keep it intact. And then we'll twist this up and hopefully that incorporates into the twist nicely and makes it all stay together. So far it looks like the baling wire is going to hold that good and tight. We'll be gentle with it going from the forge to the vise. And I'll try to twist it right through here. Well, wouldn't you know it, the baling wire slid right off the end of this thing. So that idea didn't work. So this is a lot colder than I'd like to twist it, but if I can get it to twist one time around, perhaps we'll be okay here. And then we'll just tighten the twist up after heating it again. So hopefully that'll keep it together. So hopefully we can tighten that up and make it look good. Like so many things we're doing is this holiday projects. They're all experimental. I'm just having fun at the forge. But so far this seems to be working. I'm going to twist it a little bit more there. Ended up with the forks a little bit short on this one. But I think it'll be okay. The good news is they've already got some spread, so that part will be easier. I would like to continue that twist up just a little bit further to try and catch that loose end a little bit cooled off the areas that I don't want to twist. And I'm going to use vice grips to just grab the round section up here and see what happens. Yep. I can see what happened. Yep. yep, that didn't go well at all, did it? That needs to be trimmed off.
but we can get rid of the excess. Now I got to see what, see what we do to fix that ugly bit of twist that that created. Yeah, okay, after some fussing and fiddling, I got it untwisted anyways. So, so it's pretty well back to what I started with, with a wobble in it. I think we'll still try and twist it. I think what I did is I actually twisted this the wrong direction and it was coming apart. So that's my fault for not paying attention. I'm too worried about making sure the camera's on and that kind of stuff. So let's see if we can correct that and make that look prettier. And let's see if I can not twist this the wrong direction. In which case, it should look a lot better. Yeah, I think that saved that. So I think the two-tine version of this is a super simple project. The three-tine, yeah, maybe not. But it's doable. Just don't do it in front of the camera the first time. And just like the last one, this is the time to shape the, the tines. These round nose pliers work really good for some of this stuff. Because this comes out of a twist unevenly, it does make it a little bit tough to get them all pointed just the right direction. But I also don't believe your hot dogs and your marshmallows are going to care that much if something's a little asymmetrical. So you can fiddle with this as much as you want to get it to look the way you want it to look. Again, I think these would have looked better if I had left them a little bit longer. But this will work. I think I might file these to make them straight across. Well, there we have a pair of either hot dog forks or marshmallow cooking forks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these things are things I've never really done before. I've made some version of probably, and I've done forks using this technique. But this twisted wire technique for a hot dog or marshmallow fork is something I've never really worried about. And for me, that's part of the fun of this whole series of simple projects, is you get to suggest things, and then I get challenged to try and figure out how I'm going to make them and do something that maybe I haven't done before or something I've always thought would be fun to do. So this was a fun little project. Now, hindsight being 2020, I would make these considerably longer. Most people don't get by these days with a nice, tame little campfire that's more than big enough to do their cooking. They like great big fires that they can't hardly get close to and you gotta cook your hot dogs from back here somewhere. So you might wanna make these things two or three feet long. So you need a lot more material than what I left for this project. But that's just up to you. Make them however long you think they need to be. The other thing I think I would do different, I like the three tine version, but I think I would take that center tine and draw it out into a long skinny taper where it's going to go up into the twist. So by the time it gets up to the end of the twist, it has feathered itself into the material and is no longer adding any thickness to the twist. And I think that twist would behave better. And I'd probably take the torch and put a little tack weld up there so those bars have to behave themselves at that point. Just a thought. But anyways, thanks for the idea. It was a fun little project. And you can add these to your cooking implements if you so choose. By the way, make sure you finish these with an edible finish. I put beeswax on them, but any edible oil that you're comfortable using is fine.
Hope you enjoyed that project. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one. Remember, if you'd like to support the Black Bear Forge YouTube channel financially, there are links down in the description to both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. There is no obligation and the content will remain free.